All right, I'm going to do a video on recessive genetics. And recessive genetics is very, you know, important when we're dealing with a, you know, python species that we're breeding in captivity. So in this case we're going to use a clown, but another parallel would be albino, caramel albino, ultramel, piebald. But let's go to clowns. Clown is a recessive gene, which means when this snake is bred to the normal wild type, the wild type appearance is dominant to the look. So when I breed this snake to the recessive clown and I make eggs, I will hatch in a theoretical probability of 100% all babies will look like this. These are wild type normal looking ball pythons. So these would be ball pythons that you would expect to find in the wild out of a wild clutch. So these are now 100% gene carriers, meaning each one of them had one of the parents contribute the clown gene, but the other parent contributed the wild gene, which is dominant. So it basically masks the occurrence of the clown. So, if I take those hats and I were to breed those together, so I took a normal looking and a normal looking, both het clowns, and I bred these together, what I would do, let's say if we had four eggs, the probability per egg in this, from a het to a het, from the previous clutch, you'd have, each egg would have the probability of being 25% the visual recessive. So in this case, it's clown. So if I had four eggs, the theoretical probability would be 25% the visual heterozygous, 50% heterozygous, 25% normal. So if I remove the clown, the remaining babies, these are called probable hets, which means in theory, two of the three are heterozygous gene carriers, but I cannot guarantee visually discern the difference between the two hets from the normal. So these are called 66% possible heterozygous for clown. That's a fact. This is all how it works. This is probability. So what happens if I now bred a clown to a hat, and if I raise these up, so this is a recessive clown. So basically, this is the homozygous expression of the gene. So it's the full expression of the gene. When I breed two hats together, I can make the homozygous full expression of the clown. So if I breed a hat to a visual, and I did four eggs, and I looked at probability, each egg would give me a 50% chance of being a clown and it also have a 50% chance of being a heterozygous but what would happen was I would literally if I had four four eggs and I hit my probability I could have two clowns and two heterozygous so if I take and breed a clown to clown both recessive genes together all resulting babies will be the homozygous clown expression. This behaves the same with albinism, same with piebald. It's all the same, but this is a very important thing. When you're, you're you know, buying animals, when you're planning on breeding them, this is basically recessive genetics. And remember, recessive means this snake, even though when you breed it to a normal, the, the resulting baby looks normal, it still carries at the locus site a gene for the clown, but it is hidden by the normal appearance of the wild type because the wild type is dominant to clown, dominant to albinism, dominant to pied. All right, say goodbye on recessive genetics nerd style.